Gardner is an SCSEMA certified medium, a healer, and an ordained minister. She has studied at the Association of Research and Enlightenment, the Eddie Casey Foundation in Virginia Beach. She studied Inside Transformational Series, Science of Mind, Silver Mind Control Method, the I Am St. Germain Foundation, Self Realization Foundation, which is Paramahansa Yogananda's foundation, and has studied at Arthur Finley College for the advance, Advancement of Spiritualism and Psychic Studies in Essex, England. I met Patty in the mid 90s when I was just beginning my own spiritual development, and she was a regular at services like this. And I always remember being impressed with the light that she brings to anything. She's been my teacher and mentor, but mostly my friend, and is an ex shining example of someone with a deep dedication to her spiritual path. I'm really going to enjoy her words today. Patty May we have a moment of silence, please? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with a moment of humor. My mother and son were out shopping. And she came to a pharmacy and she said, I'm going to run in here for a minute. Would you like to wait outside? And the little boy said, yeah. So she went in and along came a man. And this man said, could you tell me please where the post office is? And the little boy said, sure, just go down this street and just turn the corner and you'll see the post office. He said, thank you so much. And he says, you know, I'm the new pastor in town. And if you come to my church, I'll teach you how to find God. The little boy said, ah, oh, go on. You can't even find the post office. <laughs> so this morning, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try to tell you how to live in the world with love and compassion for the self and others, for yourself and others. God is within us. We are all children of God. Our main desire is to love and be loved. This is the essence of God. God is that love, and that love is within us. The essence of our being is love. To prove it, all that lives on this earth wants love and attention. So I'm going to tell you two remarkable stories that happened to me. Robin said I went to the Association for Research and Enlightenment, the Eddie Casey Foundation, and I was taking a course with a wonderful teacher on healing. And at recess she said, go take a walk. So I did, and as I'm walking, I saw this big bug with big eyes, and I swear our eyes met. So in my mind, I said to this bug, aren't you beautiful? You are so beautiful. This bug lifted one leg, lifted the other leg, turned all around, <laughs> and I'm not lying. And then all the time I'm saying, you are so beautiful in my mind, not out loud. And then a car came along, thank goodness, because when I looked to the car, that bug flew up, kissed me on the mouth, and took off. Wow. All right, that's one story. This is another one to prove it. I was up in North Carolina, and I was sitting on a rock. And 
on a fly lit on my arm. And the sun was shining on the fly and it was all iridescent. It was so pretty. So again, in my mind, I told the fly how pretty the fly was. And guess what? I don't know why I did this, but I patted the fly. Do you think that fly flew? No, the fly stayed there and I patted that fly. And then the fly flew, but guess what? It came back. It either came back or it said to its friends, hey, you can get a back rubbed over there. <laughs> I don't know, but those things did happen to me. And that proves that that love and that attention is in everything, everything that's alive on this earth. And everything is alive, not just us, everything is. So with that, loving other people and treating them unselfishly enables us to understand other people's real need, to be able to look beyond what they say do and feel and see their real need. That takes humility. Keep your advice to yourself. Open your ears and listen. You'd be surprised what you find out. When we can let go of the I and the me and look beyond into the hearts of our fellow man to see their real need. I and me is of the ego. I can do this and I will do that. And that belongs to me. So we blind ourselves. We get stuck in our feelings, hurt. upset and all those feelings and it makes you react in not a good way because you're so upset we are dependent on the people in our lives and we love and support them we are all part of a mutual support system this is the way the universe functions. We must first improve ourselves before we can truly help another. When you are upset, angry, fuming, you're in your mental and emotional bodies. You completely shut down. You can't even think straight. And you keep repeating whatever's happening over and over and over again. And you say, well, this mind stopped. And you're trying to fix it in your mind, but you can't because it's already happened, but it won't let you alone. So what's happening? Your mind is controlling you. And what's important is that you start to control your mind. Tell it to be quiet. Stop all this chatter. We have thousands of thoughts every day. They're destroying our minds. It's hard to be quiet because when you're quiet, you hear the voice of God. We can help no one unless they ask for our help. We respect people for where they are on the ladder of life for we are all where we need to be. We need at the right time and the right place. God is also working in their life. Now I wanna share with you something with you. Maybe a lot of people don't know this, but years ago I decided, it was right after I met my husband, that we were gonna leave Casadega and, and go to North Carolina because I always wanted to go to North Carolina. I love the mountains. I packed everything in the house, put the you know paper around the pictures, and I packed everything, and I was ready to leave. We we're in the right place, right at the right time. Do you think I could leave? No, I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave. Everything was packed, ready to go. I couldn't leave. I belong here. 
That's what spirit was telling me, you belong here. And so I didn't leave. I unpacked everything and I stayed. <laughs> when we praise a person, that person will look, work very hard to deserve our praise because they don't want us to alter, they don't want to alter our good opinion of them. Thus, both people benefit. We see the good in them, and they see the good in us. So be aware and alert of how you can be helpful. When you think of something that's good to say, say it. Don't be bashful, say it. You know, what a beautiful dress. It really is. I love it. And look at her face. It just lit up. It just, it's just like a light bulb that lit up. <laughs> and a big smile. But that happens with everyone. You make them feel good. When you think a good thought, say it. Don't be bashful. <clears throat> just say it. But it has to come from your heart. You can't make it up. It has to come from your heart. <clears throat> And when it comes from your heart, it comes from God. So each one of us is learning, growing in our own way. Each one of us is unique. Each has our own particular pat pattern of unfoldment. And is developed, oops, I need to go, I have to find water. Thank you, my throat is so dry. So each one is developing in their own particular way and time. We can learn to respect their growth pattern and try not to impose our standards on them. Did you know that this is Earthroom School? It is. You're in school, you're all in Earthroom School. And everything that happens to you and every person you meet is a lesson. How are you going to handle it? What are you going to do? Are you going to make the grade? Or are you going to fail? But you know, if you fail, guess what? It's going to come back again. You get another chance. That's why we call it Earth Room School. So we had to learn to grow to experience. We can close our eyes to situations, or we can open them and say, hmm, how am I gonna handle this? Why is this situation in my life? Why is this person in my life? How can I see it differently? What can I learn from them? How can I be at peace with whatever's going on? And who are you talking to? You're talking to your God self. And all the atoms in your body are gonna go, woo, 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 and they're gonna find the answer. And all of a sudden you might be doing something else and boom, you'll have the answer. That's the way it works. We're unique. We can do that. When we love our fellow man, that love inspires us to speak from our heart, guides what we say, teaches us to be tactful, and helps us to have good judgment. When you say to someone, I want to talk to you, or I want you to do that, do you think they listen to you? They do not. They close their uh, they close their, I was going to say their eyes, they close their ears, and they probably close their eyes too. <coughs> and they don't listen to you. It goes right over their head. Right over their head. You know? But if you say it in another way, you know, I just wanted to tell you something. I may be wrong, but I just wanted to share this with you. That's a whole different story. People listen. They listen. But sometimes we're not even aware of how we say things. It just comes right out of our mouth because we're upset. So when you are upset, go take a walk or get a book and write it down. Write it all down because you're taking it out of your body and you're putting it on paper or you're using and you know when you do exercise, it makes you feel better. 
As we feel comfortable in the presence of another, just the way they are, we're really feeling comfortable with ourselves. When you love who you are, no one can hurt you. You stand in your own power. You know, when the kids were small, I used to say, I love myself, I think I'm grand, I even think I'll hold my hand. I used to sing that all the time. And my daughter would say, oh ma, oh ma. But what was I doing? I didn't even know I was doing it. But I was, I was. And I do love myself, I do. I love myself, I love my life. I'm very happy. When we recognize this good in our fellow man, we have a less of a tendency to criticize, to criticize them, and we learn to see their good. There's little about them that needs changing. When we look for the best of them, we'll be surprised how much of it is there. The Dalai Lama says, wisdom cannot begin until the tongue has bought, has Boy, I goofed that up. <laughs> Wisdom cannot begin until the tongue has lost its bite. Isn't that true? Right? And boy, can that tongue bite. When we begin to look beyond what is obvious to the eye and ear and begin to see with that inner eye that everyone is perfect, all changes, everyone is human, Everyone is helpless, one way or another, and everyone is helpful too. We are all here for each other. The more we honor our heartfelt feelings of love, the more chance our actions have of reaching and stirring others. Our power will come from our God source. It will be communication in the quality of our presence, not just from words spoken. When the mind and heart work in harmony, barriers between people dissolve. Now, I have written down Europe, and I'm looking at it and saying, why did I write that down? I know why I wrote it down. I was over in Europe, and we were in uh, Rome, and our plane was leaving <coughs> late that night, and we, there were three of us, and we had these big suitcases, and the man that, in the hotel we were in, he's saying, go, 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 go. Very, didn't speak English at all, but he was telling us he was not going to hold our suitcases. He wouldn't do it. And what were we going to do walking around Rome, right, with three big suitcases? Do you know what I did? I mean, I didn't know I did it. My cousin told me I did it. But I didn't, I wasn't aware and I was doing it. I didn't say a word to him. I just looked at him. I looked him right in the eye and I didn't say one word. And I just kept looking at him. And all of a sudden he started to fidget. He was fidgeting. And then he said, I could leave this, we could leave the suitcases. Didn't get into a confrontation, didn't get angry. I just looked. He knew exactly what I wanted. And that something in him stirred. And he did it. Congratulations. Not to me, to him, to him. So we help through who we are. We work on ourselves in order to help others. And we help others as a vehicle for working on ourselves. The reward, the real grace of conscious service then, is the opportunity not only to help relieve suffering, but to grow in wisdom and experience. You know, as we change, the people around us change. They sense the difference in us. And a transfer of energy takes place. Paramahansa Yogananda said, I was with Paramahansa Yogananda taking his lessons for probably over three years. Change yourself and you have done your part in changing the world. Every individual must change his own life if he wants to live 
in a peaceful world. The world cannot become peaceful unless and until you yourself begin to work towards peace. It is only by removing hate from our hearts that we live a Christ-like life. And again, the essence of our being is love. I believe in love, and love is the most powerful force of the universe. Now, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, rejoices in right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now what I'm gonna read you now, this woman was my client and she had to live with someone that was very, very hateful and mean. And um, it was very trying for her. And maybe a couple of years passed and she sent me this. When we learn to love, then we begin to love. When we learn to love, we know how to forgive. All the things of life we knew before love came seems different now. Nothing is the same. When we learn to love, we have a happy glow, shining in our eyes, letting the whole world know. What a joy to share with family and friends, the love of God, a gift that never ends. When we feel his love, we understand why we are here, working towards our goal in life without doubt or fear. When we open to the message that the good Lord sends, we receive love, peace, joy. His gift never ends. I'd say she healed herself. Isn't that beautiful? And she had a really, really difficult life. Really difficult. So anyway, I really thank you for your kind attention. And God bless you all. And just have a wonderful life. Okay?